Benefit cheats are rightly condemned by hard-working, honest people. Why should MPs' behaviour regarding their expenses be viewed differently? Theresa May. I don't think uh, it should be viewed differently in that I think uh, MPs who've done things wrong should be viewed in the same as, as way as other people. And uh, I think that we in Parliament need to recognise and understand how angry people are about what has been happening, about what we have allowed to happen in Parliament, what's grown up over the years and the way in which some claims have been made. Uh, I think what we need to do, crucially, is to show that we recognise the need for change and actually put some action into place. How can we hope to change the country or persuade voters that we're the right people to change the country if we don't recognise that we as MPs need to change, the rules we operate need to change, and we need to do that and we need to start doing that straight away. That's why earlier this week David Cameron brought out a set of proposals for Conservative MPs which will be put in place now. There's going to be an independent review of the allowances system, but we don't think it's right to simply wait for that. We think there are things that should be done now to tighten up the uh, system and that's what we're doing for Conservative MPs. So do you think that, for instance, a con uh, uh, Mr Cameron's aide, who was claiming with his wife, both claiming maximum second home allowances, he resigned today. Um, is that equivalent to being a benefit cheat? I think one of the problems with the system that we have had is that it appears to have allowed things like that to happen. And that's why I say we've got to recognise the degree of change that needs to take place. When you say it has been allowed to happen, you mean it was perfectly legitimate what they did? Well, I, I haven't looked at the, uh, the rule book alongside what they, the explanation of what they did. Uh, and uh, I think I understand that the fees office had agreed that. What I do know is that if that is the case, it reinforces the message that we've got to accept that the rules need to change. It is not right. I think we should, uh, people are rightly appalled by what they've been seeing. And we've got to show, as members of Parliament, <coughs> that we recognise that and that we're all in this. This has happened across uh, Parliament as a whole. And we've got to take the action that is necessary. That's why, okay. as I say, David Cameron took action earlier this week. All right. Uh, Margaret Beckett, you've been fingered a bit by the Telegraph um, for <laughs> your, um... <laughs> you, had a, you had a grace and favour house paid by the taxpayer, you rented out the London flat, you claimed a second home allowance, 72,000 over four years. Um, is, is that the same as being a benefit cheat? Well, no, because uh, contrary to popular belief, and I don't blame people for believing this, because the way it's written up is always how it's, it's, this is always how it sounds. People who have grace and favour residences don't live there free of charge. Um, they don't pay what you might call the official rent, uh, which is about uh, 100 grand or something, and which is paid from one government department to another, because, of course, these properties are owned by the taxpayer, uh, but you do pay. And people don't think you do, so of course they think it's analogous. Uh, and if that's, um, and of course the Telegraph knows that perfectly well, um, but um, doesn't choose. Uh, and I don't single them out for that. Nobody ever chooses to replace it. But Theresa is right that uh, this is a system that's grown up over many years. Uh, it has many flaws, and it has to be changed. And that is, if you recall, something the Prime Minister proposed quite some considerable time ago. Uh, and which he has pursued. And I'm glad that now it appears that everybody agrees that we have to have change. He's already uh, commissioned Sir Christopher Kelly and his commission uh, to look at the matter. Uh, we've asked them to work as speedily as they can, well, consistent with doing a proper, thorough job. And the I question think it's, is about that's benefit good, cheats, though. We might come to the future, but the question, specific question from Sheila West is benefit cheats are condemned by honest people. Why should MPs' behaviour be viewed differently? And you well, say the Telegraph and Ben Brogan have got it all wrong. Just, let me just, no, bring, in, let me I, just bring in Ben Brogan. With respect, you I said did he not say that. You said he misunderstood. No, I said you spe specifically mentioned the issue of grace and favour residences. And I said that I think most of the national newspapers do actually know what the position is, but they don't report it, and the Telegraph's right. no different in that. Ben Brogan. I think we've regularly reported that there are certain realities about the grace and favour residences, that, for example, but you have to pay, pay a benefit in kind when you stay in one. But I think, to go back to Sheila's original question about benefit cheats, the fact is that the answer is yes, there is a, uh, a clear uh, similarity between benefit cheats and what some MPs uh, have been accused of. The problem is that the system 
currently operating at Westminster does not allow us to take the kind of action against MPs that ordinary people who might find themselves on the wrong end of the law if it comes to cheating on benefits would, would have to uh, experience. And therefore, part of the challenge uh, facing us as a country and, and as a public and at Westminster is how do you find ways of holding MPs to account when their own system is so grey and so fluid that there doesn't appear to be a way of getting them? Okay. Uh, a lot of people... A lot of people with their hands up. I will come to you in just a moment. Let's, let's finish around the panel here because Ming Campbell, you also were fingered by the Telegraph and then yesterday announced you were going to repay nearly £1,500. Mm -hmm. Why are you repaying it if it was right to claim it or were, were you wrong in the first place? Well, it requires explanation, but I had one, still have, a one room rented flat in a block of flats near to the House of Commons. I've had that since 1989. I don't own any property, I have no mortgage, I have no interest in the property market in London. But in 2006 it became clear to me, since nothing had been done in this flat for 17 years, that it was no longer adequate. And that was particularly because, whereas in the past I'd spent two or three nights a week there, having become the leader of the Liberal Democrats, I was there six and sometimes seven nights a week and my wife had to come quite often because of the things we were expected to do together. And so it seemed to me right to try and resolve this. And I had two choices. I could either abandon the flat and go elsewhere and pay much more, substantially more, or have some renovations done. And I asked someone who knew about these things to help me. But my question and is, why did you pay money back? I'm what you've described so far is that what everybody knows yes, is I'm the second home thing. Oh, well, could you I'm, come to it then? I'm coming to that, indeed. And the reason I'm coming to that is this, that when all of these invoices and things were produced to us uh, in the course of the last two or three weeks, when I looked back at what I'd done, it seemed clear to me that asking this person to help had been for my convenience uh, more than anything else, and that in those circumstances it wasn't justifiable to expect public funds to bear the responsibility for that. Why did and it take you all that time to work that, that out? Didn't you think that? Didn't you interrupt you? Didn't you think that at the time when you put 